Have you ever wondered about life's biggest questions? Like, why am I here? What happens when we die? Or what else is out there? Well, we have, and we love to talk about it. And if you're listening, we think you probably do too. I'm Robin. And I'm Karen. And we've spent our lives searching for those answers. And we're seekers just like you. We'll be talking to some of the most fascinating spiritual teachers, healers, and scientists and showing you how you can use some of their spiritual practices for yourself. We'll also be sharing stories of other seekers to motivate you to live your fullest life. And we'll be translating it all so the spiritual stuff won't feel so out there. So if you're curious, get ready to rediscover why we're here together. It's Robin and Karen, and we're so excited to introduce you to Jenna Corre. She's an intuitive energy healer that has helped both Karen and I over the past year and a half. She's able to get you feeling your best and at the same time, help you tap into your soul's purpose. Yes, Jenna is magical. And not only will we be talking to Jenna, we'll be meeting a fellow seeker, Danielle, who's at a crossroads in her life and is in need of healing and guidance. Danielle just had a session with Jenna a few days ago. She'll be giving us the lowdown on how the session went and what's come out of it. So let's get started. Hi, Jenna. Oh, hi. Nice to Uh, see you. Let's talk about how you became an intuitive energy healer. How did you know that you had these gifts and abilities? When did that start? So this, I'm going to try to just hit some like high points, but yeah, basically I've definitely been sensitive and like an empath my entire life. I didn't know what that was. And when I was around 13, I discovered Buddhism. And I feel like that was really kind of a big spiritual eye-opening like shift for me. And so that really started me going within, introspecting, journaling every day and pulling tarot cards and like trying to figure out my star chart. I struggled a lot internally, mentally, emotionally, high school years. And and then when I was 17, I went to see my first like psychic and saw a palm reader. I don't remember anything that she said except for, it was like, you have the hands of a healer. You should look into Reiki. And I was just like, what is Reiki? I don't know. Like, what's my love line say? Am I going to meet somebody like? Like, totally. where's the guy? I don't yeah, care. Yeah. Like, I was just 17, like, whatever. And then that just kind of, like, went in one ear, out the other. And then I would, I went to, like, a psychic fair by myself. And I <laughs> learned the first place I ever, it was, like, this little psychic fair at the convention center in Reno, where I grew up. And mm-hmm. that's the first place I really heard about chakras. Like, I got a chakra reading. I got a picture of my aura. I got, like, all this stuff. And then I became more invested in this world and just more interested. I'm like, people do this for a living? And I always remember it just being very jealous. I wish I had that gift. I wish I could do something like that. Through college, it was more about like poetry and writing and expressing myself and nature and that I was really like my spiritual path. And then after that, like all of my 20s was basically work, 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 ambition, like do the thing, get to the finish line, climbing the trail. And I kind of left all that stuff behind. And I still had like yoga and as my own personal practice and doing automatic writings, that was like a, a practice that I did every single day of opening up to spirit a specific guide, asking spirit, asking my grandma, asking whoever a question, and then just waiting and receiving an answer. And it felt like immediate, automatic. And it felt like it came through my hands. Like it felt like my hands are the magic power. I heard of the concept of it and was like, I'm going to try that. And then it just like worked. And I think it's a practice for everybody to, to access your intuition and to begin to like be getting answers from, from your own center and from like beyond from spirit and out of you. Around 29, right around my Saturn return, hit me hard. I'd been self-employed and was doing marketing consulting. It was kind of like the most successful I'd ever been. Had so many clients. Everything was going so well. And I was sinking and like dying inside. And I couldn't, I would like wake up so anxious. I felt like I was going to puke and I just wanted to like hide under the covers. I didn't want to look at my to-do list, look at my emails. I was just burnt out, like completely overwhelmed and just like sunk into deep depression. That's when I did this kind of 180 of work and ambition and like getting to the finish line. I want to slow down at 32 when I had my baby. 
it's now or never. Like I'm going to show my child, you can do whatever you really want in this life and like really go for it. Honestly, the shifts have come when I'm like at my lowest, lowest points. And I, so I quit my business, quit freelancing, like quit this very steady gig I had. And then two weeks later, my husband got fired, no income coming in eight month old baby. And then I was just in seven months of like hell and stress. And through that, during that time, that's when I like first received a sort of like intuitive message that I really knew for sure was not me. I decided mm-hmm. to get attuned to Reiki. That sounds good. That Reiki thing. I'll do that. And so I got attuned and and then I never even thought about it again for like years until after my husband lost his job and we were in this like hole. And then I remember I was just washing dishes one day and I got literally like, it sounded like a beep, a bulletin in my ear that was like, boop, 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 message for Justin. <laughs> I was just like, huh? <laughs> and I kept watching the dishes and it was like, boop, 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 message for Justin, my husband. And I, I had had that practice. I was like, okay, I'm going to grab my pen. I'm going to do the automatic writing. And then and so I like put my stuff down, grab my pen and out came this message. And I was like, I think this is from your aunt. And I read it to him and he started crying. And I've, I've been doing this for years, but I've never gotten like a message from someone else through me. That's right. very strange. Wow. Because that was an instance of that. And then I just decided to like start practicing that. And I was just doing free readings of like, let me give you a message from spirit and just see what comes out and every time they're like wow really it makes sense to you <laughs> okay like and then somehow down the line I decided well I'm going to like learn more about Reiki and maybe I can do something more with that and I went up to master level that's when I started playing with doing the distant Reiki session and it just kind of like evolved from there everybody has a different story so I think it's interesting for people to know how you discovered yours. What was the message for Justin? That he's going to be okay, like staying focused, something about like the eye of the tiger and like he can do it and stuff like that. And then the next day when he got in the car, he turned on the car and he heard eye of the tiger was playing on the radio. And then he went, he was going grocery shopping and he walked in the grocery store. Eye of the tiger was playing. (laughs) And you're oh, just wow. like, I get it. I Affirmation. Get it. <laughs> Affirmation. Can you just explain very basic one-on-one level what Reiki is? Very basically, it's like channeling universal life force energy. It's like chi. So it's a Japanese energy healing technique where you just become like a clear channel to open up to this life force energy, let it flow through you and to the person. It's almost nonspecific. Like you're just open a channel, letting it flow, letting the energy do its thing. That is how I started out, but I sort of evolved and it became my own sort of thing. And then I realized I wasn't, yeah, really doing Reiki anymore. (laughs) And going back to that for one sec and just even adding to what you have made it for yourself. When you say that you're this clear channel, it is used for healing purposes, yes. right? What, can you explain what kind of healing is typically done with both traditional Reiki and then the healing that you do? Yeah, traditionally Reiki, it's definitely like an, an emotional, mental, physical cleansing and it's channeling, yeah, this like healing, perfection, like it's force energy into wherever it needs to. If it's like an injury or anxiety, like it can help and serve and heal. Would you say that you use it in that same way? And how does it differ? I do it in the same way in that I become like a clear channel and let source kind of flow through me. But because I am intuitive Two, I I was getting all of these messages and seeing things and hearing things and feeling things. And typically in Reiki, it's more kind of the practitioner, the person doing it isn't really supposed to put their opinions, their energy into it. It's just like, I'm a clear channel and it's flowing through me. And then I was like, I'm a clear channel. It's throwing through me and I have a lot of shit to say and I don't have to like tell you (laughs) and I couldn't so that kind of became part of it of just talking about what I was seeing and feeling and then my just background in chakras just made me kind of tune into different energy centers and like it felt different like energy felt different in different areas of the body and then I just started feeling into chakras which have nothing to do with Reiki typically like they're two very separate things but they work 
work really well together. So can you talk a little bit about chakras and how you utilize it in your healing methodology? Chakras, they really are energy centers in our body and they work with our aura. So our physical body is called our etheric body. And we actually have 108 chakras like on our physical body that connect with all the meridians. And that's like ones that you can touch. And then the next from your skin and out, like this aura from skin and out till your like arms can outstretch. That's called your astral body or your energy body. And then that is where your chakras live inside of you. They're part of your astral body. That's where the, the seven main internal chakras live. And so those are the emotional energy. Those are dealing with your emotional energy, basically, which is my like cup of tea. <laughs> and so it's dealing with what is present in your energy system is what I see in your chakras. Your aura is basically the field of potentiality, everything that exists, all of the possibilities, all of the energy coming at you from every single source enters your aura. And then depending on how your chakras are spinning, how Mm -hmm. open they are, how closed they are, they're going to like suck up energy from your aura and metabolize it, process it. They're like the processors. They like digest it, eat it, and then they move it and spin it. So a good flowing energy does this figure eight all the way up and down like this. But then if it gets stuck or hindered anywhere along the way, then it can't flow Or if you have one chakra that's really wide open, that's just like like a vacuum sucking up all the energy, then you get overwhelmed. So they really need to be in balance. So they both receive and give out energy, both in the front and the back of your body, going in and out. You're giving and receiving energy out into your aura. And then your aura is like interacting with all the other auras of all the other people. So it's like your when your chakras are balanced and aligned, they're in tune with what is in your aura, what it's in the field of potential. They suck up what's in alignment, what's like congruent with how balanced your chakras are. That was really helpful. I never heard it put that way. Thank you. When you are communicating then with spirit, and what do you see? So I'm really communicating more with like your your body, your emotions, and your guides. I actually feel like all of my clear senses are working for me. My first like predominant one one was clear audience. That's what comes through with automatic writing. So it's hearing things in your thoughts. It feels like your own idea. It feels like it's hard to differentiate it at first until you just kind of get practice. And then now I literally hear different voices or different intonations or like I can tell it's it is not me. So I could hear a message or I'm so like poetic and like metaphorical. I see a lot of just metaphors and symbolism. So I'll get like like a lot of just visions, visualizations, like dreamy images that are metaphors for the person's emotional experience or what they're feeling or what they're going through. So I, the spirit like speaks to me through that vision, through actual like words. And then I also just get clear knowing, clear cognizance. The clairvoyance would be the like visions and symbols. And then I feel it too, clairsentience, but I have a good like boundary on it too, like as empaths. I believe all of you, if you consider yourself an empath, you're clairsentient. I can feel things in my physical body. So I'll feel like I feel grief. I'll feel sadness and I'll know that it's the person's sadness. I feel like I'm going to cry or I'll feel like excited or I'll feel fearful. So I, it's like all of them put together working in harmony. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. I, yeah. It's a lot, (laughs) but it's like, it only, it's only when I'm doing the session, it feels like very, like my boundaries are very clear. And how do you think that your sessions help somebody live kind of their truest purpose for being here? A lot of what comes through in sessions is subconscious, intuitive knowings that the person has already. And so it feels like the session, hearing it spoken out loud by me can help them just validate their own intuition, their own knowing. It can help them like tap into the little tiny voice that's back there that's whispering, quit your job or whatever it is that they're just like, no, 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 no. I can't listen to that. Like it can help clear it. Like it's like it peels back the layers of the things that are in the way so you can get clarity and just get centered and feel 
that calm within yourself to know I have the power to make the best decision. Everything's good. It just like reorients you back to balance. I feel like you're talking to my soul. <laughs> like you are talking. I really feel like you're talking to my soul and I feel... And then you're giving me the guidance and the confidence to move ahead with whatever it is, big or small, in my own life. And you're working from an energetic place and realigning me so that everything lines up with the message. Hi, Danielle. Welcome. Hi, Danielle. Hi. So good to see you. We're so excited to hear your story and a, and a little bit about your experience with Jenna. Why don't we start with just you telling us a little bit about yourself and, and your secret journey. My journey started when I was in high school. I grew up in a really religious household and I noticed myself gravitating towards other belief systems. As I moved on, I felt like I conformed to things and I got a corporate job and I was really young and ambitious. And then one day, I just took all my money and I hit my breaking point and I and I left the country for a year and I traveled through Southeast Asia and India and Nepal and I learned so much from each country. I like to joke that I'm not necessarily Buddhist or Hindu or whatever. I'm a little bit of everything and I found so much peace there. As a seeker, your journey is constantly changing. And right now, my journey is to find the peace that I found when I had out there. When I came back and that year afterwards where I had a glow where I didn't even care if I was wearing shoes and people in New York thought I was crazy and I was like, I live in India. So like, I don't have that anymore and I want to find what I had inside me and figure out a way to keep it within Manhattan. And if Manhattan isn't the place, where is it and what does my future need to be? My question for you now is, where are you right now? What is going on in your life that brings you here today talking about your story and then working with Jenna? You know, there's a fundamental difference when you're traveling like I did for a year, which is you learn the difference between being alone, lonely, and independent. And I think that I came back independent and I'm the opposite. Granted, Corona's not helping. I live alone and I'm isolated. So my roommates are my walls, but I do think that's really where I am, right? If I was going to do a high level, it's how do I get myself to realize that I'm independent and I'm in charge. I think Jenna, <laughs> I think that resonates with some things that you know you mentioned and resonated with me as well, which is getting out of the mud that Jenna spoke about a little bit in our session, which we'll talk about. It's this confusion and it's also new beginnings and this is super timely, but starting a new job during this pandemic is really hard. Well, we need to so talk I- about that. We need to talk about that because what people don't know is that you had just left a job and that you'd been at for several years, right? And then you yeah. started a brand new job. Why do you tell people about that? I will be honest that I am having a very hard time with it. I came from a job where I worked with Karen and I felt super confident. So right, we were talking about independence and I felt at my former position, I knew when I walked in there that like I knew what I was doing that day. I was confident whether things at home or everything else was kind of falling apart. I had that structure, that stability, but I needed to take a leap of faith because I wanted growth and change. And as the universe would have it, my first day was the first day where they took the entire city and sent them home. So I didn't ever even met my boss. I have not met my coworkers. It's quite difficult because I'm a social person and I'm struggling with the idea that people won't get to know me. They're going to know a virtual me, which is futuristic, I guess. It's a big change. It's a big change. And the timing was, listen, I'm a Taurus. I don't like change, period. I'm stubborn like a bull. And then I made a leap of faith and it was like, whoa, the whole world changed. Robin's a Taurus too. I am too. So I can relate. I understand you had all this newness going on at once. So I think it's very timely that you then also had this session with Jenna, have you had energy healing before? Have you had? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I had experienced Reiki when I was 21. I unfortunately was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I had two tumors on my thyroid. And then when they went in, there were four. Listen, at 21, you don't have perspective, but I was working at a job at, ah, uh, and this lady, she, we weren't even close. And she pulled me aside and she had asked me as a gift to her to let her do a Reiki session on me before 
It was a week before surgery. <laughs> I have the chill thinking about it. It was something like I'd never experienced before. This is where I was 21. I was still so young. And I laid down on a table. She took me into one of the massage rooms and she did this thing and I'll never forget. It was like she pulled these strings from, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm getting like emotional. She's put, she pulled these strings from inside me and didn't really speak verbally, but I understood what she was doing. We never really looked at each other. And then she wished me the best. And it was the last thing I did before surgery. Do I think that it had an effect? Yes. I have the chill. That I mean, no one, like, awesome. <laughs> like, yes, I do. It's just, it was just this amazing, I just have this image where she's just standing behind me and she's just pulling. It, it was like, I saw like elastic band in my head. I don't know. So yeah. And then from there, you know, that was also part of my experience with being a seeker. And I've meditated, I've gotten my yoga teacher certification. And then in India, you know, I've been in ashram. So I definitely touch upon a lot of things. Thank you for sharing all that. No, of I, course. I didn't know those stories. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. Let's let's get to the session. I really am dying to hear about that. And, and how you <laughs> How you felt. So walk us through, Danielle, like what you did and what you felt. I signed up online, super easy. Um, And you get an email and you fill out like a really simple form. And then you set up a time. And this is, you're like, but wait, how do you know that they're really going to be there at this time? Because you're meeting on a virtual plane. Like, you know, you have that like in your head, you're kind of going through all of that. And you're like, really? But yes, you feel it in your heart that you know that she's committed. Jenna mentioned in in her email to take crystals. I just thought to myself, it was a Sunday at noon on Eastern time. And I remember that just because I had opened all the windows. And in Manhattan, we don't get a lot of sunlight when you're next to a lot of buildings. And there was just so weird. It was just a stream of light. And I decided that's where I'm going to lay on the floor. And I put the crystals next to me and there's a glass of water. And then at noon, you just lay down and close your eyes. And that's how it started. And I will say that at first I like, you know, I twitched for the first minute because, you know, you're trying to like, I'm not comfortable. I'm going to have to be here for like a half an hour. Is this going to be comfortable? <laughs> um, and then the first sensation and the, the, the strongest physical sensation I had had was like a lot of pressure on my chest, almost like, not like I can't breathe pressure, like a really strong hug, like someone put, pressing down on my chest. And it was like, okay, relax. There were flashing thoughts. I tried to meditate. So, you know, my head did obviously drift and then I brought myself back. There was a lot of my mind because it was going to be the day before I had started a new job. So I was, to be honest with you, I think I spent the first five to 10 minutes struggling with my intention. Because I was scared that if my intentions weren't set before the session, like, it, like I could only have one intention for this session, I wasn't given any of it. And let me tell you, somehow or another, in my recording, you hit every one of my intentions. I think what's important to know with these sessions is you don't actually have to go in with one intention. And I found it really releasing when I let that go. And there were some moments where I felt like I needed to move my legs, but it wasn't because like, I wasn't being told to, but my body was like, move your legs right now for a second. And so this is like just the physical aspects. I didn't have, besides the beginning and a little bit of the end, you know, sensation wise, I really mostly had at the end, I felt tingling because I did think to myself, like, how would I know a half an hour is up? And it's crazy how you'll look over and you're like a half on the dot. Um, And the biggest physical sensation is I had woken up with my hands cradling my stomach and like, like wrapped around that. And then I lay there for a little while. I felt invigorated, but exhausted. I had just enough time to like make coffee, relax. And then I got Jenna's response. And then it was like, well, now I can't do anything today because like this is (laughs) aligning and I need to take notes on existence. I guess that's the best way I could say physically how I felt. Wow. That was an amazing description. I'm very play by play watching Jenna's face as you're telling your story. <laughs> it just, oh, but she doesn't get to hear this very often and it was just so meaningful for her. Well, and let's so, talk yeah. about let's talk about what Jenna is doing while you were laying there and feeling all of that. Jenna, can you tell us what you were doing? And again, I want to reiterate to everybody that you are not you don't have the phone next to you. You haven't called anybody. You are literally by yourself, wherever you choose to be relaxed. And Jenna 
taps into your energy from where she is, which is usually pretty far away. And in this sense, they're on either side of this country. So can you talk about that and, and just how that works and how you are able to tap into that energy? And then what, you, what are you doing with your process during this? To begin with a session, I set an intention to of just like, I write your name and then I'll set an intention of just for you to be in the highest alignment, receive the highest healing and highest alignment. And I put it in a little pyramid and then I kind of, I set my energetic space. I like create, I go sit outside by a tree. I love to be out in nature because nature and the elements are giving me like messages the whole time too. And then, so I basically start by just asking to be a clear channel to receive any guidance, wisdom, and like healing that you specifically need. And then anything I feel or sense in the next half hour is like for you. In front of me, I'm laying out crystals that are sort of like representing your physical body as if you are in front of me. So I'm feeling a lot of it. I have my eyes closed and I might be like humming or ringing a bell or doing different things. And I'm just feeling around your different chakras, looking for imagery. So I'll be like around your root chakra and, and having an image of, of mud or dirt or whatever. And then I just kind of remember that. And then I'll like work, what is the dirt about? What emotion is it? And then bring some people in or whatever, invite the spirits in to like help me clear it out, move it out, get it moving. It's really about like moving any energy that I find that's stuck or heavy or stagnant. Then I like invite clarity in, invite source energy in and like kind of sweep you clean. And then, but it's very specific and like particular to your energy. It's a practice of me just like letting go of my self, my thoughts, my ego, and just like being that channel and feeling around. Anybody has power to at least go within their own selves and clear their own chakras out. Like we all can do this. Like if I can do it, anybody can do it. Do you think it's kind of like your soul talking to her soul? Because I'm just thinking, you know, how, you know, are you saying out loud, I want to connect with Danielle? Yeah. I asked to connect with her highest self, her guides, and then just like open up to her highest healing, her highest alignment, whatever is going to bring her balance. And then I just kind of follow my, what my body's doing and let it do its thing. But I do some particular things of just making sure to clear energy, drain energy, and then like replace it with, like you create a vacuum of energy by clearing it out and then replacing that with good, harmonious, cosmic light, like filling the holes, filling the gaps back up. And Jenna, one of the things that you're so good at is is the recap. Or your gift back is this recording of everything you saw and everything that you did. I just, I just think that is so unique and such a gift. I don't know. And the I'm other at- thing yeah. we'll have to share is the is the the photo right of what you send. I treasure that. So go ahead, Danielle. Talk a little bit about some of the the key takeaways and how they resonated with you. I had a listen to it a few times. Two different times I felt two different things were really resonating with me. It's been a week since I've gotten to really think and let it all soak in. And right off the bat, Jenna was mostly talking about my sacral chakra, my lower abdomen, my, my, my lower chakras. And it was like, as if I knew she was going to go that direction, like in my body kind of cringe because it's like, I'm avoiding this anyway. What's really awesome is that move all Jenna's telling me things and, and she's, She's explaining what the chakra is, like your sacral chakra, your creativity, your sexuality, your, you know, your groundedness. And then I'm drawing a blank on the one right underneath it, Jenna. <laughs> Root. Yeah, so both of those were where, you know, she had mentioned that she had focused on the most. And they both physically on my body are my least favorite parts of my body and both spiritually and emotionally cause a lot of mental pain for me but then it was like you started talking about it like it was mud and dirt and that really resonated to me but then you switched and it was words here and there that I picked up that something inside me wanted to hear a certain thing. So uh, as of late with age and whatever, I'm not sure what's going on, but I've had non-doc. They were dreams, but I am now considering them nightmares of just 
having a baby. He is a specific baby. Every time it gets more detailed, there is a name now. I'm actually calling them nightmares because they won't stop and they keep getting more vivid for me. And I'm blocking that part out. And you're talking to me about my lower abdomen. You compared the mud to fertile. You talked about, you know, self-care and what can you do? You said genetics. And then you said this place is healing from traumas in the past, which I have had that have to do with this. You went in there and you're like, there is pain here and you need to root it out and heal from it in order to move through the positivity and the fact that you spent so much time there, like in those chakras trying to like scoop it out. So you would say to make room, I felt like you really spoke to that area that I've been avoiding confronting. You mentioned a few things also, like not genetics, but ancestry and, you know, my mother's side and things like that. And that just played a little bit to me more of more of symbolism for for culture and society expecting me to fill this thing. And I'm sitting here being like, but my body's craving to go this route and has been for a while because of some things in the past, but it's just, you know, it'd be going against the grain or not sure what that means and uncertainty in my life. And then to fast forward, wake up cradling my stomach. That's why I had such an emotional reaction post because that was what really resonated. I remember thinking like, oh, do I have like a belly? And then when I listened, I was like, stop talking. <laughs> it, got, it got it because it got heavy, but it was, it was, it really spoke to it. And it was like, you didn't have to say the sentence because I knew what you meant and I knew what you were going with. And then as you start talking, talking about some other things um, and you went up into the heart chakra, you spoke about my body needing attention and a lot of it is, you know, physical attention to my lower body and you started talking about movement and I've recently gotten into being more active, but you know, I know it could be more and you just talk about like releasing old beliefs and I was like, it's all like intertwined. What really is something that is something that I've had a hard time my whole life doing, which you spent, I think a majority of it was more about like rooting out this pain and this mud that I'm hiding underneath but the other stuff that you had spoken about which really resonated with me was I I mean in not these words but I'm not kind to myself first time I listened to it I was really wrapped up in the potential procreation and all the genetic part and then the second time it was more about me and self-care care so much that not only do I have the recording which is something that you don't get for most sessions also you know when you sent me the pictures it gave me the chills and of the of the stones and then and you followed up with some affirmations that spoke to you and you told me you were going to do it in the recording, which is just, I, I needed it and they work. Wow. How are you feeling today? I know it's been several days. How do you feel like it has motivated you or given you the confidence to make certain decisions coming up? You know what? I think, you know, heightened my awareness to certain things, right? So I got a new job, right? This is all intertwined and I'm signing up for benefits. And this is the first job ever where the first thing that stood out to me was that they pay for freezing your eggs. I know this is like insane, but it goes really far. And I was like, I've never heard of a company doing complete payment for 60 months. That's incredible. Wow. Right? And I'm like, but I'm reading the, the thing and that's where my eyes are going. And that was two days after. I think the biggest thing, and this just happens to be part of the fact of being, you know, housebound with Corona, which is Jenna taking the flashlight on the things I've been trying to avoid about myself has caused me to be more aware of it. Being home alone, I'm cognitive of some things that I need to invest in time working on this. It's more like I'm, a, I'm over the denial stage. I'll give you that part. Interesting. Yeah, that's big. Taking this time to be able to take those affirmations to the next level, but also the fact that this person who's like almost a country away can pick up on those very basic feelings that are deep, deep within. When you have this little sliver of time to really do that. Well, and it's on purpose, I feel like, you know, we collectively have been talking about how this is a time that's being forced upon us to really look within. And so you would have been doing that anyway, but on top of it for you, just by chance to have this session, right, that is so customized to you. I mean, the universe is really knocking on your door and telling it you. It literally stopped for me for a second. The universe stopped and yeah. was like, oh. get on it. And Jenna, yeah. what do you usually suggest for people after your session to, you know, keep that energy going and to really utilize what you've given them in terms of those tools? Usually I give people really like specific suggestions based on whatever their energy was showing. Like I'll give them exercises to stay grounded or exercises to connect with their guides or whatever is most imperative for 
for them, but there's always like practical resources and tools. And really after a session two, you're more cleared out, you're more like aligned, you're more in tune, you're more intuitive. So it's like it clears things out for you to be more aware. So that when your eyes are drawn to something or when you get like a little sign coming in three times, you see the same thing. Signs happen and more things happen, more it's like you're use those tools, use their resources to keep digging in, keep going in. That shadow is like the shadow stuff, the dark stuff, the hard stuff. I think that is a lot of what my sessions deal with is like digging in the shadow to be like, I yeah. see you sh- shame and fear and I love you too. Come in you here. You said that whole sentence to me. That whole I sentence did. is in my recording. How can you? I'm, I'm not <laughs> kidding. I like wrote it down. Have you done like, it would be good for you to do an exercise of talk, like literally talking to your emotions. Like I, I mean, I might have to. One thing that I love that you mentioned that I'd never heard of was you mentioned that I should do some shadow work. It was just, you said it during the session. It was so crazy because I could tell that you were just talking about a million things and it just came out as like, so it wasn't even like homework at the end, but I wanted to say that I never knew that much about it. And Mm. I definitely think it works. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's really important right now during this time for everybody because chaos and crisis all of this trauma we're experiencing brings out our shadow to be like, ah, here's all the stuff that is out of alignment, that's out of congruence, that needs to like come into harmony. And you can't really feel balanced within yourself unless you're really like accepting and loving your whole self, the parts that you have shunned away and hidden away and stuck away. That's kind of like what I see and bring up. And I'm like, this little piece of you wants want some love really is about like loving the shadow acknowledging the shadow accepting I feel this right now and I still accept myself I still love myself I think that's a big part of humanity what we're moving through in this transformation is good versus bad it's kind of like it's all we have to accept it all it's all the same thing it's all two sides of the same oneness well and it's so great that you give us all that opportunity to look within at a time when we really need it. Like these are the tools that we really need to utilize. And and some of them are very, you know, simple. I mean, I think we all would love to have a session with you, but even if we can't, those ideas of like the chakra cleansing and just grounding where we are and, and the breath and those things that you talked about are just so important for all of us, especially, especially now. Yeah. And, really, and Jenna does offer a lot of free resources on her site, on her YouTube channel. So I feel like for those of you who are interested you should definitely check out getmomojo.com, which we'll have up in a graphic somewhere below me right now <laughs> and start to look within yourself, you know, and then potentially get a session with Jenna. But at least now you're introduced to these concepts. I think, as you said, Karen, especially during this time. Danielle, thank you so much for coming on this show and, and, no, and just thank you telling your story and, and sharing just with all of us told your story so well and really it's true thank you so much for being vulnerable being open i think a lot of people are going to resonate with with you and your story thank yep. you so much thank you guys for having me and thank you jenna for meeting me on the astro plane yes. really <laughs> And to everybody who is watching and listening, we want to hear from you. So share your thoughts, stories, questions on seekingwithrobin.com, on Seeking with Robin on YouTube. And we look forward to seeking more together. So thank you. Hey!